come following praise and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We will have Brother Brandon come with our prayer and scripture in Jesus' name. Amen.
worship him. Hallelujah. From your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we could all stand, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And take a moment just to honor him. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We're grateful. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We're grateful this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
I want you to close your eyes and begin to think of how mighty God is. I want you to think about what God has done here. And then I want you to think about that thing that seems so hard that you're waiting on him to do right now. He is mighty. He is mighty. And he is a God that cannot lie. And he is a God that cannot fail. If you put your trust in him, I promise you that he will. If you put your trust in him, I promise you that he will. If you put your trust in him, I promise you that God will. Because nothing is too hard. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too great. Hey, that's my God. How great. How great. How great.
Where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Bless is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them. Who passes through the valley of the hosts, make me the rain of the hosts. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God, our Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day is my voice is better than thy house. I have rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. All together, the Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusted in me. Amen. Jesus, again, we thank you for our gathering in your presence. We thank you, Lord, Lord, for the songs of Zion that praises us in the heart of your people. We ask God. That you would minister, O oh God, unto us more today. O oh God, bless the body of Christ, Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, continue, O oh God, to feed us with manna from on high. Lord God, strengthen, O oh God, each and every one on today. 
Lord, we're praying for that soul that's in prison on today. We pray for that soul, oh God, that's sick in their body on today. Father, we thank you for what your word declares, oh God, that you're able, oh God, to open the prison doors to them that are blind, oh God, and to, oh God, by your stripes we are healed. We thank you for every promise wrapped in your word. We claim it even today, oh God. We pray for that soul that needs saving on today. Break their hearts, oh God, touch their spirit, their minds, oh God, on this morning, that they might cry out, what must I do to be saved? Oh Oh God, and strengthen the house of God, each and every one, Lord God, hallelujah, where they need it the most. Build your people up on their most holy faith, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. Increase the faith of your saints all today. We love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory be to God, amen. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, verse 2 in this uh, psalm here says, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. And I just want to preach today, amen, we need the Lord. Praise the Lord, we need the Lord. This uh, psalm church was, amen, uh, one of the songs that they sung as they were approaching the house of God. But there's this song, as you look at how, amen, it expresses the heart of the psalmist. It was written from the heart of one who, amen, had an anticipation of just being in the presence of the Lord. I think it's important, church, that we maintain that attitude, that we know we need God. That we long after God. I think it's important that we maintain that attitude that we're going to love the things of God. We're going to love everything about God. Got to be careful, saints, that we don't lose that strong and that deep love for the Lord. Amen. Especially in these times. Amen. There, there should be in every one of us an anticipation uh, to come before God and to see his goodness. Amen. There was one thing about this text, church, in context. The people of Israel, they were to appear before God three times a year. Amen. And so you can understand why there was such a longing in their heart to come before God. When they came together and offer up their sacrifices, they will see God move and display his power in a mighty way. Praise God. And, and so because there was, amen, a, a limited time when they would gather together as saints, a congregation before God, these three times a year, there would be a longing in the saints. And, and I'm, I'm here to say to you, brothers and sisters, there should truly be a longing in our soul. We saints should never just say, I'm just pressing my way, but we should truly have it in our heart that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's, it's just not the physical building that we long for, but it's the presence of God. It's, it's, it's seeing God move. It's seeing God work. It's seeing God demonstrate his glory. Church, that longing allows us, amen, to come before God with an anticipation. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, church, when we, when we recognize that we need God, we don't just come before God for form or fashion, but when we come, we come up and we say, God, I know, praise the Lord, you know the desires of my heart. I know that you see what I stand in the need of, Lord, but I'm just coming before you because I know you have the answer. Church, I'm here to tell you that some people seek the answer and all kinds of stuff, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, we got to know that the answer lies in the Lord. Amen. Everything we need is in Jesus. It's, it's wrapped up in our God. He is sufficient for everything that you would ever desire. God is not slack concerning his promise. He's not slack concerning the saints of God, but there should be a man within us, a hunger. Lord, I want more of you. Praise God. I want more of you. I, I, I got this aching in my soul. And that's what the psalmist says here. Church, he, he expresses it this way. He says, how amiable are my tabernacles. He says, Lord, I love your house. I love your house because that was where when they gathered, God showed up. And, and that's how we got to get church of God. We can't let 
the house of God become nothing more than what God intended for it to be. Praise the Lord. We've got to let the house of God be the place where God dwells. This, amen, is never to be, amen, a place where this and that goes on, but it's to simply be a place where prayers can be sent up, a place where, amen, needs can be met, a place where souls can be delivered, a place where, amen, bodies can be healed, a place where if you de need deliverance, amen, you can obtain it in the presence of God. And so the psalmist says, amen, how lovely are your tabernacles. He says, I love the house of God. Is that in your spirit today? Praise God. That's in my spirit today, church. I love being in the presence of God. I love being in the company of the saints. I love the sound of the saints worshiping and praising and magnifying God. I know, saints of God, what it provokes by God. You've got to understand that the word of God says that God inhabits the praises of Israel. He inhabits, inhabits the praises of his people. When we, brothers and sisters, come together and exalt the Lord, the Lord knows how to reveal himself. And that's why, amen, when we get it right, praise the Lord, we can see God move and, and we can see God bless, amen. We can see God, amen, strengthen us where we need it the most. And, and I'm here to tell you, saints, you just got to get it fixed down in the depths of your heart that I need the Lord, amen. Hallelujah to God. Yes, you got to live naturally and, and yes, there's some things that you need to take care of your day to day, praise the Lord. But this here, this is what you need the most and that's what you have got to say to God that I need you, Lord. I need you. I need you. You got to say like the psalmist, not another minute, not another hour, but I need you right away. Praise God. You don't have to be in a desperate situation to say that you need God. You just need to realize the state of your soul. I know what my life looked like without the Lord. I know what I would have been without Jesus. I know where I was headed without the Lord on my side, but I realize that with Jesus walking with me and comforting me and strengthening in me from day to day. I know I got just what I need. Can somebody say amen in the house today? Amen. The psalmist says to a saint, he says, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. He says, my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. That's where you must be, saints. Amen. I'm here to say one more time that amen, our love for this is not just about the building. The building might not be as pretty in somebody else's building, but we're not looking at the building. We want to know, is God in the midst? Is God showing up? Is God present? Praise God, we could be in the shack. Amen. But if the Lord shows up, that's really what matters. Praise God. And, and that's what the psalmist says, that my heart has a cry. It has, amen, something that it's longing for. It's longing for God. It's longing for the presence of God. It's something that I need from day to day. Amen. I'm here to tell you, church, this addiction is greater than any addiction that's in this world. Amen. Some folks can't stop running to the bottle. Some folks can't stop running to this, that, or the third. But I'm here to tell you that I'm saved. That is something that my soul wants. And that's Jesus. I can't get enough of my God. And I, amen, can't get enough of experience with Jesus. And that's why I have to say to you today that you must come to the realization that without him, you would be nothing without him. You would surely fail. We need Jesus to be everything that we need him to be on today. The psalmist says, yea, the sparrow hath found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young even thy altars, O Lord of hosts, my king and my God. He says, amen, those birds and those swallow, they have found a place of comfort in the presence of God. And I want to say to us, church uh, that you've got to get to a place uh, that you are comfortable being in the presence of God uh, as a child of God you have to learn how to tarry in the presence of God Lord I don't want to move from the place of your presence because I realize that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy let me ask you saints uh, have you experienced the joy that just comes with being in his presence uh, have you 
you experience the joy that comes with just laying before Almighty God, just turning before Him, worshiping God and telling Him how much you need Him. That's a joy, church, that once you experience it, your soul will cry after it from day to day. But that's where you must get, amen, even on today with all of the distractions that's in the world and all of the things that seek to change your love for the Almighty God. You got to say to yourself, amen, there is nothing that this world offers that will take place of my relationship with God because I need Him. I said I need Him every day of my life. I need Jesus. I need Him now more than ever before. Hallelujah to God. The Bible says, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still be praising thee. Now watch this. Amen. You can testify to this. Amen. The last time we were together, we were praising God. Last week we got snowed out. But when we came together today, we found in this house. And what did we find ourselves doing? We didn't find ourselves murmuring, complaining, grumbling over this, that, and the third. We came together and we were still praising him. And I'm here to say that next time we come together, we still gonna be praising him. And if it happens again, we still gonna be praising God. Because we love this. We love God. We love the things of God. We love everything about Jesus. Because he is our all in all. And you got to know, saints, that not only do we dwell in this house and we praise the Lord, but the word says, blessed is a man who strength is in thee. You see, we know where our strength is at. We know where our power comes from. We know that it takes the Lord to stand and to withstand the storms of life. We know that it takes the Lord to make it through. And I'm here to tell you that some are not making it today because they don't have God in their lives. But I want to say to you, get this Jesus. You might not know him today and the parting of your sin, but I give you this invitation. Get to know this Jesus. Get to know the God that can fill you with the Holy Ghost and change your life around. Get to know this Jesus who is able to deliver you and set you free. Get to know this Jesus who will provide everything that you need. Get to know this Jesus. It will be your strength. Amen. We don't rely on our own strength because we're not strong enough to make it. We're not strong enough to go through. We're not strong enough to overcome. But we know where our strength comes from. And if we call on Jesus, he'll give us just what we need. Come on and bless God in this house. Hallelujah to God. Church, he says to us, Blessed is a man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. In other words, I'm determined to live for God. I'm determined to walk before him. Church, when you obey God, God will do it for you. If you obey God, God will turn everything in your favor. When you obey God, what the enemy intends, the heart you uh, and discourage you uh, and to set you back. Uh, God will turn it for your good, uh, but you got to obey God. Uh, you got to seek His ways. Uh, you got to do what God tell you to do. Uh, you got to obey the scriptures. Uh, you got to walk upright. Uh, you got to serve God uh, with your whole heart. Uh, you got to learn how to forgive. It. You got to learn how to love. It. You got to learn how to overcome. It. You got to learn how uh, to do what God says. Uh, because when the way of God uh, is down in your heart, uh, it won't be in church uh, when you walk before God. Uh, but you can do it wherever you're at. Uh, you can do it in the corner of the market. Uh, you can do it on your job. Because uh, in your heart, uh, it's to please God. Uh, said to the brothers this morning, uh, I want the same testimony uh, of Enoch. Uh, for the Bible says, uh, before his translation, uh, he had this testimony. Uh, that he pleased God before I die. I wanted to be known that I pleased God before I die. I wanted to be known that I walk with 
Jesus. I suck with Jesus. I struggle with Jesus. I did his will. What am I saying? When you love God, you realize you need him. When you love God, you realize you can't make it without him. When you love God, you realize that if God is not with me, I can't make it through. Praise the name of our God. And so hear this saint. He says, who passing through the valley of Becca, making a well. This valley saint was a place of weeping. It was a place of tears. In other words, it was those difficult times of life. On their journey to the house of God, these saints had to pass through a difficult place. But nevertheless, they maintained their anticipation for God. And I want to say to you today, I don't care how hard it gets. Don't lose that drive for the presence of God. I realize that even though it's difficult, I need the Lord. Even though it's rough, I need the Lord. Even though I can't see clearly, I need the Lord. But watch this. It's a matter of perspective because the writer says, amen. He says, glory to Jesus. They make it a well. The rain also fills up the pool. In other words, that dry place that they went through, they learned how to turn a bad day into a good thing by changing their perspective. And that's what you got to do. I know the devil want to set you back. I know the trial want to extinguish your joy for God. But listen to me, saints, make it a well, that bad day, make it something good. You got to learn how to say like Paul. These light afflictions, huh, which are but for a moment, huh, working for us and far more, huh, exceeding huh, an eternal way of glory. Huh. We don't look at the things which are seen huh, because they're temporary. Huh. I got to tell you, saints, huh, that that valley, huh, it was a temporary place. Huh. The struggle, huh, it's only temporary. Huh. It won't last that long. Huh. But it's about your perspective. Huh. It can change your perspective huh, and learn to see it, huh? like God does. Huh? That desert place huh? can be a blessed place huh? because you can see God. Huh? And that's the thing about it. Huh? When you need the Lord huh? and you realize that God is your everything, huh? no matter where you are, huh? you can see God in it. Huh? You might be in a battle, huh? but you can see Jesus in it. Huh? You might be in a difficult place, huh? but you can see Jesus in it. Huh? And I'm here to say, saints, huh? open up your eyes. Huh? The Lord is with you. The Lord is going to take you through. He's a present help in a time of trouble. He's a present help in a time of trouble. Watch what it says. Who passing through the valley, making a well. It said the rains also fill up the pools. It says they go from strength to strength. Amen. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. You got to see this. That even though you go through the struggle, you go from strength to strength. Why is that? Because when your perspective is right, God will settle you. I heard Peter say, after that you suffered a while, He'll make you perfect, huh? establish, strengthen, huh? and settle you. Huh? I'm here to tell you, huh? my faith has only gotten deeper huh? with every struggle I'm going through. Huh? My strength in the Lord huh? has only gotten more firm huh? with everything I'm going through. Huh? But you got to change your perspective. Huh? Stop looking for a reason huh? to doubt Jesus huh? and understand the negative huh? is a setup huh? for the next miracle. Huh? God is trying to show you, huh? even though it looks this way, huh? that's not what it looks like. Huh? I'm trying to show you my glory. Huh? I'm trying to show you my presence. Huh? I want you to see me huh? in a better way. He's trying to show you something more about himself, huh? but the child of God has got to get it. Huh? Amen. And so, huh? we go from strength to strength. Huh? Some stuff you thought you couldn't take, huh? but after you go through the storm, huh? you find yourself stronger. Huh? When you look back over your life, huh? and you realize God's been with you. Huh? The stuff that tripped you up last week, huh? amen, it won't do nothing for you now, huh? because you're stronger now. Huh? But that's why you need the Lord, because huh? the Lord will make you strong. Huh? When you 
pray to God. He'll build you up and he'll firm up your footing so that you're not moved. I hear the word say, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall never be moved. Amen. When you trust God, you ain't going nowhere. When you trust God, running is not an option. I'm not going to flee because my God is on the throne. Run from what? Retreat from what? Stop serving for what? I've got a mind to do the Lord's will. And so I'm here to say to you, stay strong. Go from strength to strength. Watch God reveal how strong he is in you. Heard Paul say, God said to him, my grace is sufficient for my strength. It's made perfect in weakness. If you want to see God's strength, watch how strong you are when you feel your most weakest. Watch how strong you are when you feel yourself vulnerable, like you can't take no more, like you can't do no more. But with Jesus, he'll give you more strength. With Jesus, he'll help you go through. With Jesus, you can do all things through Christ. The Bible says, which strengthens us. And so, saints, it's time for us to get deep rooted in God. It's time for every saint to get planted in the Lord. God wants to establish you, but you gotta let it happen. God wants to make you firm in Him, but you gotta let it work. The Word said they go from strength to strength, and every one of them is Zion appeared before God. In other words, my heart's longing is to show myself approved before God. Every child of God, huh? gotta keep coming to God. Huh? You might have got a feel of God last week, huh? but you need a fresh feeling today. Huh? And then tomorrow comes, huh? and you need another touch. Huh? Why is it because God's not for sufficient? Huh? No, that's not the case. Huh? The case is, huh? every day as you walk with God, huh? you deplete that spiritual virtue, huh? and you need more of the Lord. Huh? So you go to God daily. Huh? Lord, refresh my will. Huh? Lord, give me more. Huh? I need you. I need you. I need you. You got to come to that place where you know you need the Lord. Huh? So, the child of God, huh? he says, oh, Lord God of hosts, huh? hear my prayer and give ear, oh, God of Jacob. Huh? He says, behold, oh, God, our shield, huh? and look upon the face of thy anointed. Huh? You got to see this, saints, huh? that God looking over you. Huh? There's an eyes that's surveying you from day to day, and that's the God of our salvation. Huh? That's why we can learn huh? to be confident in God. Huh? Amen. No saint needs to be fearing when you understand God watching over you. Amen. He know huh, where the enemy's at. He know huh, where the devil set his trap to destroy you huh, and to move you. Huh. But as a child of God, huh, you gotta put stock in the reality that the Lord's face huh, is over his anointed. Huh. Keep watching over me, Jesus. Huh. Hallelujah to God. Huh. Amen. Never mind. Huh. Norton, huh. Amen. Security. Huh. Amen. That's good for what it's for. Huh. But I need God watching over me. Huh. I need God monitoring the dangers huh? that's in my life because huh? I can't see everything huh? and I don't know everything huh? but one thing I do know huh? is that I huh? I need Jesus huh? one thing I do know huh? is I huh? I need the Lord huh? I need God huh? to reveal himself huh? I need God huh? to build us up huh? I need God huh? to give us wisdom because huh? we're going to work for God huh? and the devil huh? is pushing against us. But I'm here to say, I need God because when God shows up I can push back and let the devil know this victory belongs to us. This victory belongs to the saints so we can push back. That's why the word says resist that devil and he gonna flee. You gotta learn saints to stand firm and know who you are in the Lord. When you know who you are, huh? you understand huh? that the battle isn't yours. Huh? It belongs to God. Huh? When you know who you are, huh? you understand huh? that there are some things huh? you just don't got to fight. Huh? You just start thanking God. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Huh? You did it, you did it, you did it. Huh? And I don't see it, huh? but you did it. Huh? I don't know when, huh? but you did it. Huh? I know you're working. Huh? I know you're a miracle worker. Huh? But I thank the Lord. Huh? That I'm on your side, huh? and I thank the Lord huh? that your battle is 
for me. That's what I'm here to say. You gotta come to the realization that we need the Lord. We need him saints. We need him every day. Can't wait till tomorrow. I need God right now. Can't wait till next year. I need God right now. I need Jesus. Strengthen us, Lord. Give us what we need. Clear our eyes, God. We don't see straight. We don't think straight. Renew our minds. Give us, God, what we need. And I'm here to tell you, saints, you must come to a place in your soul that as a deer pants after the water brook. So my soul pants after God. When is the last time you just said to God, Lord, quench this thirst of mine. I'm coming to you. I may not have a thousand words, but I just want to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I want to experience your grace. Lord, I want to see your power in my life. Lord, I just want spiritual vision that I might do your will. Lord, give me another touch in your anointing. Lord, give me what I need. Hallelujah. I'm in the inner church. Need Jesus. I'm here to say everybody needs Jesus. We need him. We need him, saints. We need him. I need you to sing. As the psalmist says, he says, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. You got to get this, saints. He says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You got to come to a place where you will cling to Jesus. He said, I'm going to be a doorkeeper. I won't be nowhere else. And if I'm in the house of God, I'll take the most despised job. But just let me be in the house of God. He said, a day in your court is better than a thousand. And I'm here to tell you, church, when you experience the joy of the Lord, you know what he's saying. I can tell you, saints, the day I got the Holy Ghost was one of those days where I can say to God, I can live that day over and over and over and over and over. Why do I say that? Because the joy that flooded my soul when that Holy Ghost began to speak through me. I didn't learn that language. Didn't go to school for it. Couldn't teach me in the classroom, but the Spirit of God gave me honor it. That day is better than a thousand. I don't care how good it's been at times of my life. I still say to myself, a day in your court is better than a thousand. It's still better on the Lord's side, and I'd rather be a doorkeeper. You gotta say to your soul, I'd rather be with Jesus. I know the world got something to offer, but a million dollars don't compare to Jesus. I'd rather, hallelujah, Jesus. The world might offer you promotion. The world might offer you this and that, but I'd rather, when you need God, you say to your soul, I'd rather, I'd rather suffer with him. I'd rather endure affliction with the people of God. I'd rather be with Jesus. I'd rather, I'm here to say, like the saints would say, glory to God. I'll take Jesus for mine. I hear Peter say, where shall we go? You got the words to eternal life. Have you got to that place yet, saints? Where is you with Jesus? I don't care how many people are with you or leave. You got to say to your soul, it's me and Jesus. Because I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be by myself with Jesus than to dwell in a tense of wickedness. You've got to come to a place where you want God more than anything else. you got to be at that place. He says to a saint, amen, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Must say to your church, the Lord don't want you to fail. 
Hallelujah, God. You saved. The Lord don't want you to fail. That devil shooting at you daily. Said to the brothers this morning, we should never say to ourselves, we are not in warfare. I got you to, I need you to understand that as you walk as a saint, you are continually being under fire. So if the devil is shooting at you publicly or privately, you are consistently under fire. But the psalmist says, the Lord God is a son. Amen. God is a one. That's a source of spiritual life for the saint of God. Then he said, the Lord is a shield. God is protecting you. You don't even always see it. Devil got traps all around you. Want to kill you. Want to take you out. Want to destroy you. But the Bible says that God will be a shield. Because God don't want you to fail. And I don't know who that needs to hear that. But I want to tell you today that Jesus doesn't want you to fail. The devil wants you to fail. Some people may want you to fail. But the Lord don't want you to fail. The Bible says the Lord will give grace. Amen. In other words, he'll give me the strength to do what I need to do. The Lord will give grace. He'll help you with this journey. You ain't walking by yourself. You're not struggling by yourself. The Lord will give you the grace to make it through. Somebody don't realize that you got someone to lean on. But when you got Jesus, you got somebody that you can lean on. Here the Bible say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and he shall direct your path. God will give you grace. You came today with a need for God. And I'm going to say to you, God got what you need. He going to give it to you. He got grace for you. He'll give you what you desire. The Bible says, not only will the Lord give grace, but he will give glory. God will say, saints, it's an honor to serve the Lord. Amen. And it pays to follow Jesus. Somebody in here today need to know that serving the Lord is going to pay off. I hear the word say, it's going to pay off. Be not weary and well doing. Yet in a little while, what am I saying? It's going to pay off. Keep walking with God. It's going to pay off. Keep serving the Lord. It's going to pay off. The Bible says, no good day. Somebody wondering, is God seeing me? Is he going to do for me like he did for somebody else? And I'm going to tell you, no good day. When he withhold from them that won't come rightly, he's not going to hold back. He's going to bless you. He's going to do it for you. He's going to bless you with a miracle. He's going to work it out on your behalf. Glory. He says the Lord is a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. Saints of God, you got to know that no matter what happens, tribulation, distress, nakedness, famine, peril, or sword, nothing will separate you from the love of God. He'll shield you in. But you got to learn to cling to Jesus. You got to learn to stick to the Lord. I'd rather have this than anything else. You got to say to your soul, I need him. I need him. I can't live without it. Don't take God out of my life. I need Jesus in my life. Praise the Lord. We're in a society, saints, that want to push God as far as the they can. Amen. But we can't live like that, saints. We need Jesus on our side. We need him on our side. He says this, saints, the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. No good thing. Will it withhold from them that woke up right now? Keep doing right. It's coming your way. He's not going to hold back what he intends to do in your life. Amen. But if you realize that, if I stick with Jesus, it's going to work out in time. Praise the Lord. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to let you down. I need somebody to keep that in their soul today. The Lord don't want to see me fail. Praise the Lord. He will hold you up. He will fight for you. He will defend you. He will vindicate you. Amen. The Lord's got that thing, saints. But you've got to understand that you've got to stay in the Lord's house. You've got to stay in the family of God. David declared, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after. 
He says that I might dwell in the house of the Lord. And I want you to understand that, brothers and sisters. Amen. When he said, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord, he says, I want to be one of his. Because you got to understand the house of God is not made with men's hands. But the house of God is the family of God. David says, one thing I want is to remain in the family of God all the days of my life. That's where you got to want to be. I don't care what you go through, stay saved. Battle was on, battle raging. Amen. Ain't me trying to discourage you on every hand. Stay saved. Amen. Amen. Keep walking with Jesus. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Because serving him, it's going to pay off. Yeah. It's going to pay off. Yeah. My pastor used to teach us, just mark time. Just wait it out. Mark time. It's going to work out for you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's what you got to do, child of God. Wait that thing out. Amen. Yes, today, you might be crying. But tomorrow you will make that into a blessed day. Praise the Lord. Because your experience is going to increase wisdom in you. Your experience is going to build up your muscles. You won't be able to stand something the next time it comes around. Glory be to God. But that's what you got again. Every day we need the Lord. Every day we need him. You can't live this life without him. You can't walk independent of God. And then expect God to show up for you when you need him. He is not a genie. Praise the Lord. He does not bend into your wishes. You got to serve him. Amen. The scripture says that you got to walk uprightly before him. If you serve God, God will do it. It will be released in your life. He'll manifest himself. Listen, you got to know this. We were talking about trusting the Lord on the week. Praise God in Bible study. We said this to the saints. When God needs to bless you, he got access to everything. Brothers and sisters, the word says that cattle on a thousand hills and hills belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When you need God to move for you, God will move for you. Everything belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. But you got to see the word because the word says you got to walk up right before him. Live the life. Live the life. Talk to Jesus. If you're weak, tell the Lord about it. If you're strong, tell the Lord, I'm still relying on you. Whatever the case may be, you can't take God out of the equation. You need him. Amen. You need Jesus. He says, praise God, blesses the man that trusts in him. Jesus won't fail you. That's what you need to know. Jesus won't fail you. God's got it in his hands. And he will work it out for you. So trust him, saints. Lean on the Lord. Depend on Jesus. Trust God with your tomorrow. As a matter of fact, trust God with your today. Because when tomorrow comes, it will be today. So you got to learn to trust Jesus. He's got you. We need the Lord. God bless you today. In Jesus' name.